the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a wet Tuesday morning. And uh, look, don't even head out. Just stay in. Join in the conversation. Uh, we're going to be talking this morning about elder law. Now, elder care under the elder law umbrella. And you're like, oh, geez, okay, I'm going to turn the channel. Don't do it. Don't turn the channel. First of all, many yes. of you may be dealing with these very issues. Second of all, if you're not dealing with it, you know, with some of your loved ones, sooner or later you're going to. And I have learned so much that has helped me prepare for what you have to deal with as you age. And it's from the foremost expert, in my opinion, not just in the state, but possibly the country, in the elder law field. He was there when it all started. And he's yeah. been here with Morning Line for years. And it's nice to have him on because lately he's been sending his colleagues who are terrific. But Tim's the original <laughs> yes. deal. Tim yes. Vegas. Thank you so much. It is nice it to is have great, you on. It is great to be back. I do like it when you come on. And, yeah. and, and your colleagues that you send, are, you know, Barbara, all of them are great. Right. Because we're six times a year, you know, but on morning line. Because I I, I, we alternate between morning line and open line. And, you know, Barbara, she, Chris, my, my Chris, Chris is yeah, very impressed with he him. He is. You know, I think he probably mentioned to you, you know, he's, uh, you know, Marine Corps. Yeah, former Marine. Which, yeah, ma major. Yep. Yeah. Retired, m retired Marine. Yeah. When you know, he in came the on, Corps, oh, yeah. I was a little nervous because you never know. With this kind of topic, it takes a yeah. certain intellect to deal with it and right. also to be comfortable. He was great. Yeah, he Barbara, was. of course, is terrific. But it's nice to have you on. Yes, thanks. You are the it original, the real original deal. deal. <laughs> Remind folks, as always, again, I okay. always like to say this, but sure. elder law, the care, the types of issues, the questions you can answer. Well, it's certainly things like wills, powers of attorney, you know, should I set up a trust, you know, mm -hmm. do I, how do I qualify for Medicare, you know, what are my Medicare options, you know, if daddy goes to the nursing home or my spouse goes to the nursing home, you know, does the, do I have to pay or can Medicaid pay, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things, do I need a conservatorship, right. uh, guard, you know, all those, you know, that's the kind of thing. And all this stuff, and whether you want to admit it or not, you're going to deal with some of that yes. at some point, either yourself or for a loved one. You know, one. like the like the kind of the thing that everybody says. I think maybe Rosalind Carter said it is is that you either are a caregiver or you're going to be a caregiver or someone's going to be caring for you. That's right. That's I mean, exactly that's right. It. It's going to come around that right. way. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the phone line, 737-7587. You're welcome to jump in on this. But Tim and I were talking before the program. I'm dealing some, with some stuff with my folks as they're in an assisted living facility yeah. and all this. Many of you may be dealing with aging parents or along those lines. Now, one thing I learned from you early on, and we had some calls on this where yes. it's like, well, I'm retired now, and well, I think I want to go to a nursing home. Medicare or assisted living or something like that. Medicare will pay for or Medicaid will pay for it. That's right. And it will not, not accept at the end under certain right. circumstances. Certain Explain under certain that. But yes. a lot of people think, oh, yeah, well, I've been paying in. And, well, Medicaid's yes. going to pay for my assisted living when I move into it. And then I can give my house to my kids right. or yeah. something now, like that. Now, so first of all, let's talk about, okay, the distinction between Medicare and Medicaid. Please do, yes. Okay, so Medicare is health insurance for older people and people who are disabled. Okay. It is what... It is what we call in the, um, you know, in the in the government benefits world an entitlement, mm -hmm. and an entitlement is not a, that's not a bad thing. It's think, it's it's something that you earn. You paid into it. You paid into okay. it. Okay. You know, if you're, it's like Social Security. Social Security retirement right. is a is an entitlement. You know, Medicare is an entitlement because you paid into the system. You worked. You've got forty quarters or whatever it is. You know, and so then when you retire or if you become disabled or incapacitated, then, then you get Social Security disability and you get Medicare. If you turn age 65, mm -hmm. you get Medicare. If you're married to somebody who is, um, uh, who is on Medicare, you know, then you, as a spouse, you get Medicare. That's how it works. It's okay. an entitlement and it pays for health, for health coverage, health, okay. health, health insurance. Perfect. You go to the doctor, Part B pays, you need drugs, Part D pays, you go to the hospital, Part A pays, Medicare Part A, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. you know, and there are co-payments and deductibles, that's why people buy a Medicare supplement, supplement plan. all those sorts of things. You know, it's a very, somewhat very complex program, but it pays for health care. Mm -hmm. It does not pay for living in a house mm -hmm. because you need help. Mm -hmm. And a house could be a nursing home, and or a an assisted living or your own house. Mm -hmm. It does not pay because you need help with what are called activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. we need, do you need help with bathing, dressing, uh, feeding yourself, um, uh, 
all those sorts of things that, that come we call, with some of those that, facilities. That comes with those facilities. Yeah. Medicare does not pay for that because Medicare does not, they, they pay for health care. Right. They don't pay for what's called custodial care or just assistance with you know, dressing, bathing, all mm -hmm. that sort of mm -hmm. stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. You are on your own. Yep. Okay. Or if at some point you run out of money or you meet a minimum amount of assets, have a minimum amount of assets and in income, mm -hmm. then the state Medicaid program will pay mm -hmm. for people who need help with assistance with activities of daily living. Right. So if you're in a nursing home, you know, and you know, nursing homes are two hundred, three hundred dollars a day, mm -hmm. sometimes more, depending mm -hmm. on where you live in the country. And the, s the amount of care you need. The amount sure. of care you need, all of that, and a lot of people can't afford a hundred thousand dollars a year right. to pay for a nursing home. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the state Medicaid program, you know, will step up for nursing homes that, that are part of the Medicaid program, you know, and they will pay the nursing home. Okay. The Medicaid program. But let's be but, clear. But if you have money but if you money, have money right. a lot of people are like, Well I have my house. Nope. Yeah. Now, if you have a house, the Medicaid will say, "Well, you can keep your house under many circumstances." Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, when you die, if you're not a married person, the Medicaid says, "Well, uh, Tim doesn't need the house anymore because he's dead and mm -hmm. he's you know he's not survived by a spouse." Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to recoup what we paid Tim to pay mm -hmm. for his nursing home care. Right. That's the way it works. Right. So if you have assets, you're going to have to. It's not like you can leave that for when I go. I mean, not Medicaid yeah. is a a needs based thing as it opposed to an entitlement. Uh, yes, exactly. So, like for instance, as an example, and I don't mind sharing this with my sure. folks. Mm -hmm. Okay, their house no more. They sold it. They have the money, money in the money, bank, and that money was going to be part and parcel of what they were going to use to pay for their assisted living care down the road. Right. Now that is a finite amount. Right. They and they're may, living, and they are living in an assisted. And living. They're living in assisted living. And okay. Doing fine. And doing fine, but it's not cheap as you said yeah but their income is basically their assets everything they own now yes. it's kind of re refreshing after they yeah. sold the house and the yeah. circumstances of that everything they own is in that apartment and it's nothing fancy it's nice it's but it's right. nice it's yes. comfortable uh -huh. and then it's their bank account with that money in it some savings okay and then their social security and my dad has a couple of modest pensions right that is it so when the money runs out in uh -huh. the bank Right. And it will eventually, yes. and hopefully my folks live for several years. Right. Then all they'll have left asset wise is what they have in that apartment, which isn't worth much. Right. And their social security and those two modest. Right. Pensions, um, right. And it's my parents together. My mom doesn't have any pension, but she has social security, my dad has social security, and they right. have the two modest. And they've got Medicare. And they right. have Medicare. Right. And probably a Medicare supplement or Medicare some sort. supplement. Yeah, so that they're thing. good. To cover that. So they're good. So what a lot of people what was concerning me is mm -hmm. my brother and I will always step up to help my folks if they need it. Yes. But we were thinking when they run out and right. It's not cheap. Right. You're telling me that when their savings, they no longer have a house, they won't have any assets but those funds that come in from Social Security and their pension. Right. What do they do? What That's do not they? enough to cover their care. It is enough probably to cover about half of what they pay. Right. How will that work for them? So and they are in what we were very careful to make sure now they're in. A, a nursing facility or assisted or a, a living that accepts Medicaid. Medicaid. Right. And a lot of them don't. That's true. And most of them, Tennessee, do not. Mm. You know, and the My folks are in Boise, Idaho, yes. by the way. Um, you know, and by the way, um, you know, you are, your brother is like the, you're, you're the Nick Barris counterpart. That's right. My brother. He's Roland. My Barry, brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you know my brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's my brother is in Boise yeah. and he's in TV there, but he's the one that really yeah. works with my folks and has done a wonderful job. But right. I do everything and that was I great can because to help you him. don't have to. No. Well, I wish I well, could. I he know gets. You, could, you know, he gets the good and the bad. And I'm, what I mean by bad I'm, is there are some I'm, headaches. I'm kind of teasing you there. Them. Yes. He yes. gets to see them, and That's I miss true. them. Yes, you do. Right. But anyway, so what... And that's good because your mom and dad are still doing fine. They know who you are, presumably. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, that's great. That, yes. And they're well taken care of. Right. And they were living in, I know, I think in Washington State. Uh, Oregon. 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 Oregon, that's yeah. right. And, um, you know, so that was... So they're uh, happy where they're at, and we'd yeah. like them to stay there. Yeah. So my big concern was when they run out of money, yeah. we'll do everything we can, but, I mean, are they yeah. going to have to move or can Medicaid help? And we found out that this facility does now, they just recently, we they, were going to move they, them if they didn't. Yeah, they participate in the Medicaid program. And they, so what right. will happen? Happen okay. when my folks run out uh, how do we start planning for that okay so now if they run out of money let's say okay so they've got X number of dollars in the bank mm -hmm. and your mom and dad like spend all that down to like zero or, right. or near zero They're just paying every month paying on what every they month yep. um, then uh, they certainly if this if this facility still participates in mm -hmm. the Medicaid program mm -hmm. You know, they should be able to qualify because they have no money. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there's a minimal amount of assets. If you're a married couple, mm -hmm. you know, and both of you are trying to qualify to live in a facility, mm -hmm. uh, then the married couple can have no more than $3,000 in the bank. Okay. Okay. All right. And we very seldom see that because it typically, you know, in the past, uh, Medicaid would not, they'd really only pay for nursing home care. Mm -hmm. So in a, in, you'd almost have to have like both spouses in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. You know, so ordinarily you can only have $2,000, you know, but if you're married, you can have an extra $1,000. Thousand. Right. So if they if, could if spend, both spouses eventually are, they would run through their bank account. Right. So and they if, would be under And if that. they're both in assisted living mm -hmm. and they're still doing fine, then the state would maybe they're going to pay, mm -hmm. you know, the state of, I of Idaho will pay, you know, for their assisted living. Meaning that, that what would happen then, I'm guessing, the, is the, the, the they facility pay their income. would accept what they get from Social Security and the, the amount in the pensions, and then whatever's left to cover the cost of the place would come from Medicaid? That's right. And do you imagine that the amount my folks earn in the pension, which isn't a ton, it's a few hundred bucks, would push, and then the Social Security would they, they, exclude them from qualifying no, for Medicaid? No, because they would have, you know, Medicaid is a, they, they are called the payor of last resort. Okay. Which means that Medicaid pays before, they pay bef they pay after everybody else is supposed to pay. Okay. So if there's any other source of payment out there that could pay for the, the care, mm -hmm. uh, like for instance, Medicaid pays for health care. Mm. All right. Well, your mom and dad have Medicare, so Medicare we're going to pay. We we'll do that first. I yeah, see. but if they don't have a supplement and they qualify, then Medicaid would pay for any co-payments or deductibles. I see. Okay. That's, right. all, that's why Medicaid is called the payor of last resort. Is it resort. a long process to apply for Medicaid? It depends on where you mail. live. Okay, because I know there's paperwork. So when yeah. we think we get to that point, they need to start. Well, yeah. we'll uh, of course. Thankfully, Tim's fantastic, and I know him, and he's been an amazing guide for me yeah. through some of this. So, well, listen, enough about me anyway. we got to take a break, and we have calls coming in. But oh, I think that's something a lot of people, yeah. if you have loved ones and family that are going to this, just know that how it plays out, mm -hmm. how you're going to pay for it, and think about it. And just knowing that about Medicare qualified mm -hmm. took yeah. a little bit of a burden off us because I was bracing myself thinking, okay, yeah. well, I'm going to pick up the slack for them financially, which I would. Yeah. But it's nice if Medicaid yeah. will And help. we'll pick up the thread after, somewhere after the break. Yeah, and, sure. Know, later in the show. And, but we have calls. Yeah. We have three, Absolute four coming in excellent. now. So the number seven three seven seven five eight seven. Questions for elder law expert attorney Tim Takis coming up right after this. Stay with us.